the literal worst thing that happens after one night of no sleep, like total sleep deprivation. It completely flips your entire metabolic system on its head. And for good reason, right? Like that is some serious, serious stress. But let's analyze a paper and then kind of break it down a little bit more as to what's happening, but more importantly, how you can combat this. So this study was published in Physiological Reports. Cut and dry, when people were completely sleep deprived, they had to stay up for one whole night, it was pretty nuts what happened. They had a 21% increase in their cortisol levels. That's not a surprise, right? Like we know stress, but that's a huge, huge jump. Okay, they had an 18% decrease in muscle protein synthesis. To put it in a very colloquial way, that would essentially mean if you went to work out and then had some protein to try to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and grow, you'd lose 20% of that effect. But that even puts it in kind of a benign light. Like, an 18% decrease in muscle protein synthesis, you have no repair going on. Like things just are not functioning, right? But you also have a 24% decrease in testosterone. You can think about how this can add up. Okay, so when all this is happening, let's say you go and you just indulge on in a bunch of food because a lot of times what we've noticed in other research is when you're sleep deprived, well, your brain lights up a lot more neuronal activity to different foods foods that look good. So in essence, processed foods or hyperpalatable foods are going to look even more glamorous to you. So it's going to be harder to abstain from that, but then you couple that with high levels of cortisol. The last thing you want to have is high sugar spikes and cortisol at the same time, because you already have high sugar from cortisol. Then you add more sugar in. What potentially happens with this? I say potentially because who knows, right? But we can back data up a little bit. What happens is you have a much higher chance of that sugar going through what's called de novo lipogenesis. Okay, de novo lipogenesis means that you're going to convert that into fat much easier. And typically it's going to deposit around the midsection, right? Now, there's some ways around this and there's some other literature that I wanna talk about too. The first way around this is going to be to satisfy yourself with protein first, as much as you possibly can. Let's say you didn't sleep very well. Okay, let's say you woke up multiple times throughout the night, you only got like two or three hours of sleep. And I have another study to talk about with this. When you roll out of bed, you can have as much as a 2.6% decrease in your resting metabolic rate from poor sleep. And this is as published in the journal Obesity. This is legit data. That's not anything to sneeze at. What is one thing that increases our metabolic rate? Protein. Okay, so if you normally roll out of bed and you have some carbohydrates or even some fat and some protein, I highly recommend on nights that you did not sleep well to just go for the lean protein. Like that's gonna be normally with breakfast, you can handle a fair amount of fats. Like your fat storage genes are usually pretty low in the morning as far as your circadian cues are concerned. So that's when I typically consolidate my calories if I have the choice, unless I'm fasting, right? But on days that I did not sleep well, you bet your bottom dollar it's going to be lean chicken, maybe some lean steak and even egg whites. I really do keep my calories under control because I know my resting metabolic rate is out of whack and I know my ability to synthesize protein is low. So I increase my protein intake to compensate for that. I put a link below for ButcherBox if you wanna have some grass-fed, grass-finished steak. So if you wanna do steak and eggs in the morning and just maybe go easy on the egg yolks, but either way, that link down below will get you access to a lot of different grass-fed, grass-finished cuts. I have my custom boxes that I recommend. I just recommend it because it gets delivered to your doorstep and candidly, like their ground beef, their ground bison, their all beef hot dogs are some of the best tasting things that I've had. I know this is a sponsor placement, but they also are what help keep this channel going. So if you're on the fence, let me just urge you to give them a shot because A, you're not gonna regret it because it tastes good, but B, it sincerely does help this channel out. And it makes it so that we can keep doing what we do while you get to taste delicious things. And that link is down below underneath this video in the top line of the description and you'll have it in a few days. You may not know this, but protein can stimulate your metabolism by up to 25 to 35%. That means the metabolic thermic effect of consuming protein can potentially offset some of the decrease in resting metabolic rate. What's going to happen, however, based upon a study that was published in CHEST, is even after just a few nights of poor sleep, they noticed that subjects consumed about 559 calories more, okay? 
and subjects that slept well consumed about 118 calories less. You're going to have insane cravings and you're not just going to eat protein all day. You're sleep deprived, so you're going to make poorer decisions. What you need to do is you need to train yourself that if you're going to have any carbohydrates, you need to be active on these days. It's not that hard to do. It sounds kind of ludicrous at first, like, oh, I'm gonna have carbs and then I have to go for a walk. No, flip it around. If you go for a walk, then you have carbs or you can have carbs in that case. It's just not a good recipe to do anything that's going to trigger those cues in your brain. Fats trigger cues in a certain area of your brain. Carbs trigger cues in a certain area of the brain. Combined, they trigger both of those. So combining fats and carbohydrates when you're sleep deprived, considering we light up the brain even more, based upon American Journal of Clinical Nutrition study that demonstrated that after sleep deprivation, the neuronal activity is much higher in the proper regions of the brain associated with reward system, you're going to want to eat it even more, okay? So pal hyperpalatable food, already very tricky. Hyperpalatable food in sleep deprivation, extra tricky exponentially. So how do you combat that? It's simple. Protein doesn't stimulate that same thing. Protein, your body sees much more survival-based. You need it for repair, recovery. Like you could live without some carbohydrates. You could live without some fat, but you start restricting protein too much, you're gonna notice the deleterious effects of that much faster. So what else can you do? Hydration. It's another thing you notice when you're super sleep deprived. You're gonna be very, very, very dehydrated. Have you ever noticed on a night you don't sleep well, you're peeing a lot in the morning. So the only way that you can combat that is of course by properly hydrating. And I recommend on a day that you're sleep deprived, adding in more like electrolytes, getting a little bit more salt in, simply because that can satisfy an area of your brain in the hind brain that might make you crave a little bit less. So here's what it should look like when you roll out of bed. Roll out of bed, electrolytes with some salt. Like that's like the first thing. Maybe a little bit of even like some apple cider vinegar just because it kind of wakes the brain up. What I've noticed is it cuts my cravings. I don't have research to back that up, but it helps, okay? Then you wanna go with a lean breakfast. In this particular case, chicken breast, lean steak, and maybe some egg whites with like one yolk, okay? Just get enough fat in to satiate you throughout the day. And then keep things like chomp sticks and meat sticks and jerky on hand throughout the rest of the day and try to live on that stuff and the other like volume that's coming in from your diet should be coming from fiber, like flax or maybe chia or maybe uh, non-starchy vegetables or maybe like some zucchini and things like that that have a good amount of fiber as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.